The topic of this video is graphing transformation techniques, vertical and horizontal shrinking and stretching. If we shrink or stretch one of our basic functions towards or away from the x or y axis, what would the new equation be? We will discuss vertical shrinking and stretching first, then horizontal shrinking and stretching. All right, vertical shrinking and stretching. First, I'd like to provide a visual of what that looks like using my hands. Imagine you had a graph. A vertical stretch would be if you grabbed the graph and you stretched it away from the x-axis like this. A vertical shrink would be if you grabbed the graph and you squished it, shrunk it towards the x-axis like this. To stretch a graph away from the x-axis, simply multiply its equation by a on the right-hand side only, where a is a number greater than 1. To shrink a graph towards the x-axis, we also multiply its equation by a on the right side only, but it must be true that a is between 0 and 1. When a graph stretches away from the x-axis, every point that is not already on the x-axis moves away from it. When a graph shrinks towards the x-axis, every point that is not already on the x-axis moves towards it. When you vertically shrink or stretch a graph, you multiply each y-coordinate by a. All right, let's look at an example. Graph the functions. f of x equals the absolute value of x. g of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x. h of x equals half times the absolute value of x. You might notice that this function is our absolute value function. That's one of our functions from the library of functions. That's one of our basic functions. And its coordinates are shown here. You have the x and the y for that particular equation. And these points are familiar to us. Negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2. We have seen these coordinates before. Okay, so... Now we have to come up with the new graphs and the new table of points for these two functions. Let's look at function part b first. We notice that going from here to here, the right-hand side has been multiplied by 2. This indicates a vertical stretch because 2 is more than 1. So all of the y-coordinates get multiplied by 2. Another way to say that would be that they all double. So for example, this 2 doubles and it becomes a 4. This 1 doubles and it becomes a 2. When you double 0, you still have 0. 1 doubled is 2, 2 doubled is 4, 3 doubled is 6. And so we now get a new table of points for our function g of x, and it is comprised of these two columns of our table. The x's and the y's for g of x are shown here. Now we can go ahead and go to the graph, and we can see what those look like when we plot them. All right, so the black graph shown here in the middle is our parent function, or our basic function, or our library function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. And you can see that it has points on it, such as 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 4. The red function shown here is the part b function, g of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x. And you can see exactly what has happened here. Every point shown in black has now been stretched vertically upward to a new location shown in red. All of the y coordinates have been doubled. 2 doubles to 4, 4 doubles to 8, and so on. So you can see visually what's going on when you stretch a graph vertically. It's almost like the points are moving directly up but they don't all move the same distance. Okay, now we turn ourselves to the h of x function, and we notice that this is also being multiplied by a number. When we compare a and c, the number half is showing up. And so what that means is that we need to multiply all of the y-coordinates by 1 half. So for example, this y-coordinate of 2 multiplied by a half gives the y-coordinate of 1. An important property of fractions to keep in mind here is that multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. So for example, three divided by two is three halves, 
2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, and so on. So the columns of this particular table for the function h of x would be the outside columns. This here is the x-coordinate, and this here is the y-coordinate. And we can use these columns, these points, to create the graph shown here in blue. So for example, the blue graph contains the point 2 comma 1. That would be right there. It also contains 3 comma 1.5. Notice 3 halves is the same as 1 and a half, which is 1.5. 3, 1.5. So going from the black graph to the blue graph, all of the points moved down towards the x-axis. And that is an important distinction that you want to pay careful attention to. With a stretch, the points are moving away from the x-axis, and with a shrink, the points are moving down towards the x-axis.